You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. He's turned my mourning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Let's sing together. He's turned. He's turned my mourning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrows. I can't stay trading our sorrows this year and we are trading whatever negativity that 2020 has brought to us because our God turns our mourning into dancing. He takes off our sackcloth and He renews our joy because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you for joining us today and right now let's all just close our eyes and just continue to praise Him because He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end and there is none like Him. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, oh Lord, because, Lord, we know that you are working all things for our good, Father. Lord, you are deserving of all our praise, Lord. Father, you seat above enthroned, oh Lord. Lord, you seat enthroned above all creation, Father, and all the elders and the angels cry out, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. 
Father, as your children today, we just come to you with a heart of thanksgiving. Father, we come to you with a heart of gratitude, O Lord, because you have took our sorrows, Lord. And when you hung on that cross, Father, you took away all the darkness and you brought light into our lives. And that is why we will praise and sing of your name, O Lord. that one day that we will be in heaven worshipping alongside the elders and alongside the angels, O Lord, and we will give you praise forever and ever, O Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, even in this first month of January, O Lord, we pray that you will bless us and that you will keep us and that you will come with us wherever we go, O Lord, because, Lord, with your presence going before us, we know that we can conquer anything. Lord, just like you led the Israelites through the desert, so Lord, we know that even in this time of darkness, even in this time of despair and confusion, and when we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, we know that you are going before us, O Lord, and that is something that we can always trust.
favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you your presence go before us father in our weepings in our rejoicings in our comings and our goings lord i just pray that you will be with each and every one of us father because you are a god who never changes lord and your word says that you are with us forever and ever lord we believe in your promises father and even as we worship you oh lord we thank you for the assurance that you have given us lord we thank you for the faith that we have oh lord that whatever comes our way that we will face it because you are on our side oh lord and your word says that if god is on our side then no one can be against us lord we hold firmly to your word Lord, and I pray that even as we close this worship, O oh Lord, that you will begin to prepare our hearts to receive your word. Lord, let us hear your voice in a very new and special way, O oh Lord. I commit this entire service into your hands, Lord. Continue to be with us and speak to us. All this we ask in the most matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let this worship be a reminder to you that the Lord will always bless you and He will keep you and that whatever comes your way this year, that He is with you through it all. With that faith and with that assurance, let's all grab our Bibles, be seated and be ready to hear the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I welcome each and every one of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time in the past week. As we have stepped into this new year, I believe God has been with you, walking with you, talking with you, and he has been leading you in the past days of this new year, just the way as he led you in the year 2020. And in Jesus' name, I wish each and every one of you a blessed new year. And I really am so excited to bring the word of God to you as I was praying and preparing and asking God of what he wants us to hear from him for this week. God gave this very, very beautiful verse to me. And that is what we are going to meditate upon this day. And before we do that, shall we all close our eyes and look to our God in prayer. Hallelujah. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful time. I thank you for this time where you have brought us together in your name, Lord, and enabled us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I thank you because you are a God who is always there with us. You are a God who always amazes us with your love. You are a God who never leaves us nor forsakes us. But even as we have stepped into this new year, Lord Jesus, I pray that you lead us, you walk beside us, you guide us, and Lord, you take us through this year, 2021. Lord Jesus, we commit ourselves, our heart, our body, our mind, and soul, so that every word that comes from you, Lord, let it, Lord, help us to grow deeper in love with you. I thank you and I praise you, God. Lord, I commit myself into your hands, even as I bring forth your word. Lord, I pray that every hearer be blessed, and I will be blessed and ministered to through your word, Father. Lord, every word that comes out of my mouth, every 
meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. I thank you. I praise you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want everybody to say together with me that God is good and he is good all the time. And all the time God is good. Our God is a good God. And he is always there to lead us. And he's always there for us no matter what happens around us. Amen. I just want everybody to open up your Bibles and turn with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 9 and 10. Amen. Here it says like this, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. Hallelujah. God, this is a beautiful verse that says, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. It says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. It's a beautiful verse that Apostle Peter says here. And he says, here he talks about the God whom we serve. And what is the nature of this God that we serve? And what does God intend to do with us in our lives? Amen. This is a beautiful verse. And it, it, when we look at the nature of God, it says, God of all grace. Our God, the God whom we serve, is a God who is filled with grace. He abounds with grace. His mercies, they never cease and they are new every morning. You know, this was describes God as the God of all grace. All the grace that we need to walk. All the grace that we need to talk. All the grace that we need to explore the things around us all the grace that we need to move on with the things that lies ahead of us, all the grace that we need to work in our everyday lives, all the grace that we need to do the things that we ought to do comes from him alone, who is God himself. And we cannot de deny the fact that today if I'm standing here and if I'm speaking to you, it's purely by the grace of God that was bestowed upon me from the day I was born until this day. Hallelujah. That is the God each and every day of our lives. He floods his grace in our lives, into our lives. And we cannot deny the fact that we live by his grace. We breathe, every breath that we breathe is just purely by his grace. Amen. And just, uh, do you, did you ever realize how does this grace, the unmerited favor that we receive from God do to us? What does it really do in our lives? In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, it says like this, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Amen. This is a verse that describes everything that's happening around us. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, And God is able to make all his grace abound toward you. God does not withhold his grace. God does not keep his grace to himself. God must, does not take the grace that belongs to us and gives it away to somebody else. No, a God is a God who has his grace abounding, abounding in the sense it has no measures, the grace that God pours out on you each and every day. And this verse says, it is sufficient for all the things that you need to do with in your life. Amen. God's grace 
will enable us to accomplish anything that comes our way. God's grace will enable us to face the challenges that lies ahead of us in this new year. And that is the God that we serve today. And if we move on with this verse, you know, in 1 Timothy verse 1, chapter 1 verse 14, it says, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. And here it says, the grace that comes from God, the grace that God pours out on us, helps us to be filled with his love. And it helps us to stand firm in the faith that we have in the God whom we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you can join with me and tell, Lord, I need your abounding grace in my life each and every day of this new year hallelujah if you really say that you need that grace could you all just shout a hallelujah wherever you are and you say lord i need your grace amen and you know god hears us when we call unto him just tell god lord i need your grace in my work i need your abounding grace in my health i need your grace in my work situation i need your grace in my family situation if you're going to ask god he is surely going to give it to you today hallelujah amen and let's just move on to the verse that i read in the beginning 1 peter chapter 5 verse 9 and and here we say he called us to eternal glory God called us to eternal glory and here it says we are called by him to be united with him in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful invitation that is. Amen. And it is given to us by the God, the most high God. There's none like him and God gives this invitation. He calls us by our names he has called us he has engraved us and he has planned our life our destiny our future amen hallelujah and i really consider this the greatest honor for me the invitation that comes from god to to know that god has called me to be with him eternally reigning with him and ruling with him in glory is one of the highest privileges and the greatest honor I believe that I could receive in my life, that I have received in my life. Amen. How many of you would receive the invitation that comes from God today? God is calling you to rule and reign with him in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. God has called us and this calling that God has called us doesn't come just like that. No, there is a price that we have to pay. Uh, amen. But before that, you know, the ruling and reigning of God happens, God tells us that we have to pay a price. You know, there's a process that happens for us in order to reach the destination that God wants us to be. A process that can help us to be shaped and straightened. A process that can enable us to be polished and prepared. A process that can break us and beautify us whenever there is a need. And, a, and this process could be a painful process, but that will finally give us the privilege of being with him and reigning with him amen hallelujah you know the process is difficult it's painful you know when we go through the polishing when there is rubbing when there is scrubbing all that takes place in our lives here 1 peter 5 10 it says before you know the process begins you know before we reach the glory there is this process and the verse beautifully it's stated here it says after suffering so before we reach the glory, the word of God clearly tells us that we have to go through this suffering. Now we are called to dwell with him in glory after we surrender ourselves and submit and walk in various paths that is laid before us. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, the devil comes about like a roaring lion 
to devour and destroy our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, God, the Bible tells us that even as we move along with the walk with God, you know, there is also an opposing factor an opposition that takes place you know there is always a fight that takes place and the devil who's walk who walks about like a devouring lion comes about to destroy us and he is always there waiting and wanting to you know, to destroy our lives and to just make us into nothing to de to detour us from the calling that god has for you and i but here, if you read 1 Peter chapter 5, there Peter clearly explains that no matter what happens, no matter what the devil tries and comes and puts in your way, he says, stand firm in your walk with God. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, be sober, be vigilant. And we have to be very vigilant. We can never underestimate the enemy who is there waiting to fight with us who's there wanting to grab the blessings that God has for you and I in this new year. So be vigilant, be firm, you know, stand firm. And we can overcome this devil only by resisting him and by holding on to the faith that God is there for us and his mercy, his, his grace abounds in our lives and his grace will lead us through. And I just want to move on. Now that we know that our life as a Christian is not going to be easy unless and until we go through this process that is painful, our strength and our deeds and our efforts would be insufficient to take us to his glorious dwelling. Amen. And if you are sitting there and listening to this, and if you are telling me, I am a very strong person, you know, and nothing can disturb my mind. I'm a very tough man or a woman. I can overcome anything. I can overcome this enemy. I can overcome this devil because I am very firm and my mind is clear and I know what I'm going, where I'm heading to. I know what I can do when this thing comes in into my life. And if you're there and sitting there and telling that, I can assure you that that is not enough. Our strength, our deeds, our strength fails. We become weak, we become feeble, we fumble, we tumble, and we fall. This evening, I just want all of you to be encouraged through this verse. I'll just uh, give you a few verses that tells us that Christian life has sufferings. And if you read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, it says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Our suffering could be only for a season. And the word of God says, you know, joy comes in the morning. The morning may last for a night, but the joy will come in the morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. You know, God is there. He is there to turn our mornings into joy and 1 peter verse 2 20 it says for even here unto we he called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that he should follow his footsteps this is a beautiful verse if you are asking there are many a times people think and wonder i received christ as my savior i am a christian i am living a life that you know, pleases God. Why do I have to go through this suffering? The answer is very clear here. It said in 1 Peter 20 and verse 21, it says, because Christ also suffered for us, we also must be ready to go through the sufferings, go through the pain, go through the, the torture sometimes that we go through just because we want to be with him, ruling and reigning with him in glory amen and i just want to move on with the verse and we we want to know i just want you to know that in we know this word this verse in 1 peter chapter 5 verse 10 peter talks about this verse to the people and he is encouraging the people that we have 
to go through this suffering. If you are wondering, how could Peter make such a statement? How, how is he so confident? How can he be so assured that, you know, this is a part of life, of our walk with the Lord? We, if you read Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 34, we read about Peter himself being sifted. After all he went through, we see that Peter became a witness for the Lord. He suffered, you know, when G Peter was walking with Jesus, when Jesus lived on this earth, we know Peter was a man whose faith was tested time after time. His faith was tested and he had to go through a process where it was painful. You know, he denied Jesus when Jesus was went through the walk, uh, the carried the cross and he was going through the trial and Peter was the one who would you know who in many instances we see that he failed and he fought he fell at times but he went through the suffering and he was sifted but the end of it once he received the Holy Spirit once he was baptized with the Holy Spirit once he was anointed he was his message was the first sermon, his gospel that he spoke to the people, brought 3,000 people to know Jesus as their personal savior. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatever we go through, whatever suffering we go through today, just like what Peter went through, and that enabled him to be a witness for God. Now 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 1 says, a witness of the suffering of God. Peter became a witness to the people. If you read the book of Acts, there you see Peter, every opportunity that he had, he stood up and he spoke about God. He stood up and he proclaimed the gospel with boldness and with the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, I just want all of you to be encouraged. When you look at the life of Peter, be encouraged. And we also know that Peter became a partaker in the glory that was revealed. You can read that in 1 Peter chapter uh, 5 verses 1 and 4. And it says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Peter was a witness. He became a partaker for the glory that was yet to come. And if we look at our lives, Peter went through, and here after going through, Peter says, what happened after the suffering that he went through? He states four things in the verse that I read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. He, he perfects us. The first thing God did was he perfects us. And the next thing it's written, it says he establishes us and he strengthens us and he settles us. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you want God to establish you today? How many of you want God to strengthen you today? How many of you want God to perfect you today? Just read with me the following verse in 2 Corinthians verse twelve, uh, chapter 12, verse 9. It says, And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Hallelujah. God's grace is sufficient and his power is perfected in our weaknesses. God is filling you with the perfect strength that you need to go through this new year, this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Just receive it by faith from the presence of God. And the Hebrews chapter 11 verse 40, it says, Because God has provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Here, the word of God clearly tells us that the only way that we can reach the perfection, only way that we can walk a life that pleases God in our weak moments, in our tough moments, comes from God himself and not by our own strength. Amen. There are many verses. You can just read Hebrews 12, 23. Hebrews 11 verse 40, it says, yeah, you can just go around and read that verse when you have time. And James 1 4, it says, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfected and complete, lacking in nothing. Hallelujah. How many of you want 
this year, all through this year 2021, to be a year that's filled with the providence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. This verse here in James 1, 4 says, So that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Hallelujah. You know, the Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in one. Today, if you persevere in and progress well in the uh, process of, you know, uh, preparing yourself to attain the eternal glory, God will perfect you in every way that you need to be perfected. And the second thing God does is he establishes our faith. Romans 1 11 says, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift that you may be established. Hallelujah. We need to be established in the Lord. Our lives that we live needs to be set on a solid foundation and that is God himself and God is there always you know reaching out to us helping us pulling us and setting our feet on a solid ground and he establishes our ways you know Proverbs says commit your ways unto the Lord and he will establish your works and God establishes the work of our hands when we walk along with him Amen. Hallelujah. And he will also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of the coming of the Lord. And the next thing God does is he strengthens us. Amen. How many of you need the strength of God today? Just, just keep your minds, listen to the word of God. And Psalms 119 verse 28, it says, He will strengthen me according to his word. And if you need the strength of God, it comes from the word of God. And the word of God is God himself. And when God, when you allow God to dwell inside of you, when the word of God is, keeps ringing in your mind and your heart and in your spirit all the time, when you move about listening to the word of God, talking to the, you know, the word of God, speaking out, proclaiming the word of God, he it will strengthen you each time you fail grab on and hold on to the word of god and what god does finally is he settles us he gives us the peace that settles in our hearts that no one else can give in this new year as we head on as we move on all you have to look forward is allow god to do the work in your lives let him do the work for you. Let him fight the battles that lies ahead of us. 1 Peter chapter 5, if you read, it says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you and he cares for this new year. He knows the blessing that he holds for you. Just commit your ways. Allow God to strengthen you. Allow God to perfect you. Allow God to settle you. Allow God to establish you and you will receive the reward i just want you to give four blessings that you uh, that you can inherit when you allow god in your lives when you allow god to perfect you when you allow god to uh, to strengthen you when you allow god to establish you and when you allow god to to settle you god gives you four blessings the reward that we reap eternally the first thing is in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, greater glory is revealed in and through your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. God's glory is revealed in and through your life when you live on this earth. And he also prepares you for the eternal glory that God has, the crown of glory that God places in your lives. Hallelujah. And he also enables you to be a witness. 2 Corinthians 4.11, 4, it says like this, we make Jesus known to this world. In the life that we live, no matter what suffering we go through, we become witnesses just like Peter went through. And through our lives, we, the grace of God is manifested in our lives. 2 Corinthians verses 4 and 15, it says like this, making grace manifest in and through our lives and finally the thing god does 
is 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, the spirit of God will be upon us. Hallelujah. God is preparing us for the eternal glory. God is preparing us so that we can inherit and live and rule and reign with him eternally. All we have to do is just come before the Lord and tell Lord, I give myself into your hands to perfect me today. Lord, I give myself into your hands to establish my ways, my works and my thoughts. Lord, I give myself into your hands so that I can be strengthened. I can stand firm in my faith. I can grow stronger. I can grow deeper in love with you. And all, you can tell that, Lord, I pray that no matter what comes ahead, no matter what trials, what tribulations that comes ahead, Lord, I pray that your peace settles in my heart. Dear children of God, the year 2020 was a very, very different year. We nobody expected that year to be like that. And this year, 2021, a lot of uncertainties lies ahead. A lot of things that we ought to face would be like what we have never faced before. Things are not going to be the same way that we went through in the past year. Things are around us are going to change. Things at our workplaces, things within our family, no matter what changes takes place. Today, if you submit to God, allowing him to, uh, to strengthen you, allowing him to establish you, allowing him to perfect you, allowing him to settle in you, and you will be united with him in glory, and you can reap and rejoice with him eternally, and you will rule and reign with him. I just want everybody to close your eyes and commit yourself to God this day. And just tell God, Lord, I give myself into your hands, Lord. Lord, you use me, strengthen me, perfect me, establish my ways and my thoughts so that I can live eternally. And Lord, just commit yourself that you will always stand firm in your faith. You will resist the devil that comes your way with the strength that comes from God. Amen. Let's just go close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer pray a gracious heavenly father i thank you for this wonderful time lord just as peter said lord i pray that we allow ourselves to come into our lives father to lord do the work that you have planned for us in your life the year that lies ahead of it lord we don't know what it holds but we know that you are in control of everything lord we know that you are a god who will be there always with us, who will be there with us to ensure that we are perfected in every way. Lord, I pray that you will establish, you will strengthen and you will fill us with your peace and Lord, you will settle us wherever we are. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God. Thank you for speaking to us and Lord, we commit our lives into your hands, Father. And every blessing that you have in store for us, Lord Jesus, I pray that you will release it into our lives this year. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. I just want all of you to close your eyes and say together with me, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, all his benefits. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week.